Hello and welcome to another episode of Atomic UK TV. Now it gives me great pleasure to be sat here with Talon Skills Piggins today. Talon is both a great ambassador, friend and athlete of the brand and is a member of the British Disabled Ski Team. Talon, hi. Could you give us a few insights into how you ended up on the British Disabled Ski Team? Well, after I really foolishly got myself run over by a car, um, I was lying in hospital and a friend came in and suggested that I could go with Backup, which is a charity, and it helps people who've had a spinal cord injury to go and do activities that they thought were probably beyond them. So I went with them to Winter Park in Colorado, and I saw these things called sit skis, and I thought, wow, they look brilliant. Uh, started to have a go in them, and spent sort of the first week falling over, but gradually got further and further down the mountain without taking a tumbles. Uh, then went on to another trip to Whistler, and then my third trip was off to Teens with the British Disabled Ski Team. Uh, and at the end of that, I got selected for the development squad. From that, over the past five years, I've spent the seasons away training and racing. Uh, and that's brought me to the level that I am now. Fantastic. That's incredible. So you're racing the same sort of slopes as an able-bodied skier would, but in a sit ski. Yeah. If it, it was just the same. We are governed by the same rules that the able-bodied skiers are governed by for the distances set between the gates and the vertical drops for all the courses. So they're exactly the same it, to the fact that we have done the Paralympics were held on exactly the same hill as the able-bodied skiers uh, for the Olympics just gone. Well, wow, that's incredible. So what disciplines do you compete in personally? I compete in four disciplines. There's slalom, giant slalom, super G and downhill. Uh, the two favourite ones for me are the giant slalom and the super G. Uh, I struggle with the technical aspects and also uh, my control of the sit ski isn't as fine as some people. So when you're doing the downhill, you're travelling at speeds of you know 75 miles an hour. If you make a slight mistake, it can all end in tears. Wow. So you mentioned the Paralympics back then. Um, you got to go this year to the 2010 Paralympics in, in Whistler. Could you tell us a little bit about your thoughts, feelings, preparation leading up to that event? Getting there was really hard work. I, I wasn't guaranteed a place. Uh, in fact, no one was guaranteed a place. You had to go and do it on your results. And for me, I actually only qualified for the speed events two weeks prior to the actual start of the Games. So I'd qualified for the technical events, so I knew I was going, but I didn't know if I'd be racing in just the slalom and the giant slalom, or I'd be able to do the super G and the downhill as well. But once you got there, it was just the most amazing experience. Um, going up the ramp into the opening ceremony where there were 60,000 people was just such a phenomenal experience. I felt really honoured and I felt really humbled at the same time. Um, going up there with you know the Union Jack uh, on your chest and this amount of support that you knew you had from the people that were there and all the friends and all the family and everybody else back in, in Great Britain. It was just overwhelming at times. Yeah, a magic. I can imagine. I mean, you've certainly uh, gone to an event there that precious, precious few will ever have the chance to do. And certainly at Atomic, we're all really proud of you and you, you have our congratulations all the way. But for those of you who don't know what sit, sit skiing is and would like to see a little, little bit more of it, we're going to skip to a clip now of Talon on his sit ski, um, travelling of speeds of up to 70 miles an hour, as he's just said. So um, see what you think. So I think you'll all agree that's pretty incredible stuff and certainly takes nerves of steel. Talent, well done for that. It's, um, it's pretty incredible. Um, so w we're in the summer now. Um, we're sitting here in Wiltshire. What are you doing with your time at the moment to fuel your need for speed? Well, I've decided that uh, even though I ended up in a wheelchair because of a motorbike, I'd actually go back and start riding bikes again. So uh, you found me here at Castle Coombe, uh, and this is where I come for track days. Uh, I normally have a GSX-R1000, uh, but I've found someone to swap it with <laughs> uh, and now yeah so riding motorbikes and also trying to race them and become the first wheelchair user to race the motorbikes against able-bodied people that's absolutely incredible so what motions have you had to go through to get to the stage of racing a motorcycle 
Well, I've had to say that I would do lots of different track days. Then I've done something called the Californian Superbike School to learn how to ride faster and also more smoothly and also far more safely. Uh, then I've had to go through a number of tests that the Auto Cycle Union have put in front of me. We've developed a set of landing gear or stabilizers for the bike uh, and adapted that as well. So all in all, we're ready to go. The first race is hopefully going to be the 4th of September, providing the ACU give me the go ahead with the stabilizers. Well, we'll be watching that with bated breath and we'll be wishing you to do very, very well. I understand that you're going to be helping to get other wheelchair users onto motorcycles as well. Is that right? Yep. In fact, the bike that we've got behind us is the one that I've just um, used today to try and test it because I've got a set of hand controls fitted to it. And what we want to do is to try and encourage other bikers who've been paralysed or who've had a leg amputated or, or, or suffered another physical disability uh, to show them that it's actually quite easy to get back on a bike and we're going to use that bike to, to teach them how they can ride again and hopefully encourage more and more to get back on a track. That's incredible. I'm sure you have plenty of people um, taking you up on getting on that experience. So looking forward into the winter, what are your plans for 2010-11 season and, and moving on from that? Well, obviously the long-term goal will be 2014 uh, and Sochi, but we're going to look at next season, and that's where the main focus is, and we have the World Championships in Sestriere in January, so that's where all the energies and the focus is going in at the moment. Fantastic, and any uh, confidence moving forward for this season? Are you feeling pretty good going into it? Yeah, I am, so long as we don't get any ice like we did at the Paralympics. Um, you know, I knew, I'm, I knew I was skiing fast going into the Paralympics and, you know, I did the best I could in the weather conditions. Uh, but, you know, that was against me. Hopefully, coming to Sestri Air, the snow will be grippy. I don't mind if it's hard, but as so long as it's not ice. Uh, and I, can't, I don't see why I can't get, another, I can't get a medal at the World Championships. You know, I've won medals before in other races and, I, you know, it's one that I'd really like to get hold of. Brilliant. Well, we'll be wishing you every bit of luck and we'll be watching you all the way. So best of luck in Italy and thanks very much for your time today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks so much. Cheers.